Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Thanks also for sending in your questions. I'm going to be answering them, or might I say, I will be answering them through the help with my spirit guides. I will be channeling this. It's about 60%, basically them, 40% Susan. And I'm going to get right to it because there's a lot going on. Actually, the first thing I want to say is, and then the spirit guides have been wanting me to tell you guys. Uh, so they're going to pull rank and go before your questions. And that is, is that just some helpful context, perhaps, as to why we're dealing with a man like you know, 45. He seems to be able to bend the rules, does he not? You know, the spirit guides are saying he's gotten away with a lot of things. Um, I don't care what anybody says, he's gotten away with a lot of things that other people have not gotten away with. And, and what this is, the reason this is happening is because we are now in a place in our human consciousness where we're ready to see. We're ready to see for the first time, perhaps, in the inception of this country, um, in a new way, the haves and the have-nots and the unequal justice or the justice that is applied unequally. You know, so the, the spirit guides are saying, uh, this is not just the United States, right? We could also look to Putin, whom, um, much like Hitler, probably much like Napoleon and some of these other bad actors said, well, yeah, we're just going to take this country. And then, you know, people say, they, they'll stop with Ukraine. They're not going to go any further. That's We know that to not be true. We know that if you do not stop people like Putin, if you do not stop people like 45, they'll just continue grifting. They, they, they don't know how to stop themselves. They're an energy that's out of control, that knows no bounds. And they've also attained quite a high rank of power so our societies don't know how to deal with them. We really don't know what to do with them or how to deal with them. So we're applying the laws and the justice that we have on the books to deal with them to the degree that we feel like we can, but it's not enough because it's not being applied evenly. The lesson here is to treat them like you would any other citizen. You know, treat Putin like the megalomaniac that he is. Deal with him. Do not give him an inch. He'll take a mile. It's the same thing with 45. He's just making a mockery of this court. He just wants to see how far he can push it. Trump's role in this lifetime is to uh, break apart things. You know, he breaks himself apart. How many times has he had, uh, what do you call those things? How many times has he had bankruptcies? He's broken himself over and over and over again, but yet he's given another chance to learn the lesson upon which he breaks himself again. Now he's in a position to break our court system, to break our even our constitution, because they're using these broken bits of our constitution, the broken bits of our laws, of our judicial system. He's, he's using those to make a mockery of that same institution. His job here is to show us that, is to show us you cannot not stand up to me. I'll make you rue the day you didn't do it. Again, this is probably happening in your life somewhere, anywhere. We, we The bully energy, the energy suggests that we're being asked to identify the bullies, to put a stop, to put a boundary, to say no. And then when they break the boundary to have a plan. And when do we say that's enough? This man continues to break the gag order. He was just in court this morning where the judge said, you've broken the gag order, I don't know, 10 times. He left the gag order ruling and did it again. So, you know, he wants to break it. He's going to make us do something we don't want to do. Now, when I say us, obviously, I'm not talking to you and me. I'm talking to the judicial system, the powers that be, don't want to put an ex-president in jail. They don't want to do it. If they did have stomach for it, they would have already done it. They don't have a stomach for it. So Trump is going to make their days hell. It's going to make them rue the day that they didn't do it. 
if you put him in jail, he's just going to make that to be a problem for you, right? He is really a bombastic energy. He's here to dissolve everything. He's here to challenge everything. You know, he's he, again, he needs to be in solitary confinement. We've talked about that before. I'm not even sure that that's ethical, but unfortunately, some people need to be in solitary confinement. They literally cannot operate in civil society. So that's what's going on there. Do I think he's going to go to jail? I think that the judge is going to have to do something because it's not, it's not tenable. He's not going to back down. Okay. He's, he's in a corner. He's got nothing to lose. He's dead man walking basically. I mean, that's a different, you know, definition, but he has nothing to lose. So in that way, the energy is the same. So I think we are going to have to do something we never considered. So I've always seen him being in the ante room, you know, in this separate room during the court proceeding. But I will also say he wants to create a mistrial. So he's going, to, if you have a two-year-old in your house, you know, you have to childproof it. You know, you have to go around your house and anything that's two foot tall, you need to remove it. That's Trump. Anything that he can, he can get his hands on any little option, any possibility, he's going to use it. So whatever he can do to cause a mistrial, he's going to do it. Like right now, right now he's setting his attorney up to be, a, a, you know, in, in law, you could go to the judge and say, my attorney's not representing me correctly. He's terrible or she's terrible. Well, this morning, the judge himself said to Trump's attorney, the court has no confidence in you. Well, that just played right into their hands because now Trump can say, I need to call this trial off because my, my attorney is not doing well. And you judge yourself said you have no confidence in him. Therefore, you can't saddle me with him or else I will definitely be appealing this because you said it yourself. They set the trap. The judge walked right into it. I think that everyone, the judge, the appeals courts, everyone is so sick of him that it, that it is a trap, but I don't see it working. It's, it's a lot like the Fonnie Willis trap that they set. It slowed down things, but it didn't work. They didn't get rid of her. So I don't think it's going to work. But again, he's grabbing at everything. He's grabbing at all the straws. There was a straw. He grabbed it. He may do something to trip up a juror and then try to throw the court. I'm just giving you the energy. This is, I'm not saying that anything is going to happen 100%. I'm saying this is the energy. So be prepared for ups and downs, back and forth. But overall, Overall, you guys, justice is working. The man is in front of a judge. This is the first president ever to be charged criminally. Had we had the guts to do this, uh, or had Ford had the guts to not pardon Nixon, we wouldn't be in this position. So our lesson came back around for us to learn. Now we have an even worse president, an even worse president than Nixon. Are we going to deal with it this time or are we going to kick the can down the road? This is how your lessons come, right? Gives you another opportunity. They, they look different. They may be packaged differently, but it's the same lesson. So I feel like no one has the wherewithal or the desire to deal with him. So I do see him and I've always seen him. Always, always, always. I've always given you guys. It hasn't changed. Three options. One, he goes to the big McDonald's in the sky. Number two, he gets locked up in some sort of mental ad hoc sort of mental institution that only has one person in it because we cannot trust him with other people for all kinds of reasons. And number three, instead of a locked up in a mental institution, he's locked up in a getmo in a very secure prison of one. Again, I I do not think, and and this is the energy, but you know. I'm reading energy and we have free will. All of these people have free will. You know, dealing with Trump, it could be 50 people that are really designing his fate, including he is being one of them, right? So all I can do is read the energy. 
the outcome is not set in stone. But because I've always seen these options, I kind of feel like it's becoming more and more the possibility of it being set in stone. So get mo, solitary confinement, crazy house, solitary confinement, great McDonald's in the sky. He's going to be out of our hair. Then we have to deal with everybody else. But the lesson is, you guys, the lesson doesn't go away. Just because Trump goes away doesn't mean the lesson goes away. So we have to be citizen activists. We have to get involved in our local communities, in our school boards, in our local mayoral run races, in our state legislature, and also in our national, of course, our U.S. Congress, and in, obviously, the presidential, in a way that perhaps is no longer a luxury. It's not like, it's a duty. We have to become citizens that take their duties seriously if we don't want this to be repeated. And I think we will. I really do think we will because as it dissolves, which is, you know, something the spirit guys said for a long time, dissolution, dissolution. I didn't know what they were talking about, but now I do. Trump is going to dissolve everything. Everything he touches dissolves. His business dissolves. His marriage dissolves. Actual people dissolve, right? So he's the catalyst for our change. And as these institutions, we find out just how um, ill-fitting they are, right? They don't fit us anymore. The, the Constitution was meant to be a living document. It's meant to be updated frequently. And we haven't been doing that because we haven't been citizen activists. We haven't been really involved. So that's where we're going. And I do see that. I do see us getting more involved. I see these young people getting more involved. Again, because when your house burns down, you have no choice but to rebuild another one. And then you get to choose. How is it going to be built? How big is it? Blah, blah, blah. This is where we are. He's burning it all down. He's burning it all down to our favor because we do need to fix it. We do need to fix it. So just a heads up about that. Now I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. I'm sure you guys have questions about that. There might be questions in, there's 200 questions here. I'm not going to get to all of these, but I'm going to do as good as I can. Um, and we'll do more of these, obviously. So Darren wants to know, now that Ukraine is getting U.S. aid, what will happen? Oh, I'm Ukraine, Russian. What's the latest on Putin? Uh, more than one question here, but hey, <laughs> great. Thanks, Darren. Um, yeah, that, it's a really good question, to be honest with you, because this changes everything. They're giving me chills right now. Um, and that means this is an important, um, this is important energy and important question and important information. So this changes everything, right? So, so now Ukraine has the ability in some ways to not only fight Russia on a, on a, different level, but to beat Russia. And one thing the United States, I think, has energetically, and I think you can find this, it's pretty obvious. The United States has not wanted Russia to, the United States has not wanted Ukraine to go into Russia to bomb, say, St. St. Petersburg, right? Because then, well, you know, we don't know what's going to happen at that point, right? Does China get involved? Does Iran get involved? Do we have World War III? So really, the United States has said to Ukraine, you can have these weapons, but you they never gave them weapons that could shoot, that could go far enough into Russia. They only gave them weapons to protect themselves, right? I, the guides often describe it as having a hand tied behind your back, right? Um, so now that's different. For one thing, when the United States for six months wasn't doing anything to help Ukraine and all the rest of the world had to rush in to fill the, the gap, well, Ukraine also had to rush in and get very, very um, innovative. And they started using drones and they started using long range of drones and they started bombing oil refineries. I mean, they started going way, way, way in to Russia and bombing them. So Ukraine said, hey, if, if United States can't help us, fine, we're going to do whatever we need to do. So no one is going to tell us what to do anymore. We're going to do what we need to do. Here we are. Here we are. Now they're going to have 
quite a different selection of weaponry, including F-16s, fighter jets, and uh, Russia is really going to get their butt beat, and that's not going to go down well. It's not going to go down well with the, that that axis of countries that would be like Russia, but support Russia. Um, so there could be a flare up here. There could be a real. You could see more than sable sable rattling, right? Sable rattling means the swords, right? Like just like uh, when North Korea shoots off their rockets, it's like, hey, we're don't mess with us, right? We got it. We got something that you should be afraid of. Well, and I'm not saying North Korea is going to get involved here. I'm just saying sable rattling makes me think of them because that's what they often do. It's actually threats, but they're sort of empty threats, if you will. Um, I think that this is changing the makeup of things. This is changing the makeup of the game. And, and what I'm seeing right now is... <laughs> You know, I've done three videos on on this when it first happened, when when before the first shot was fired and just as the first shots were fired, I did three videos. You can go back and watch them. But here we are. This is where we are. Um, we're exactly where the video said we would be. And the end, the only thing that I've really gotten wrong is the timing. The end of the of this war was the guide showed me and they're showing it to me now is that Putin gets removed either. He dies, he gets killed, whatever, however he goes missing, he goes missing. Um, and that's what I see happening. And I feel like that could really happen this summer because even though these other countries are wanting to support Russia and are worried about a very strong Ukraine with all of this, you know, weaponry and the fact that they're going to very quickly be going into NATO even though that's that's a, a real serious consideration for them. The impetus is still the same, you guys. Within Russia, the impetus is money, money, money. Russia is a huge landmass, huge country. It has the potential to have a very big GDP, a very big um, producer of goods. It has the potential. And this is the same thing I've always seen. There's an oligarch. There's a there's an oligarch and a military person. They're either the same person and it's a military person that's working with the oligarch or it's an oligarch that's working with a military person or it's one and the same. But that's the energy. The energy is of these two things. And they're like, you guys think about it like this. The guides are saying, the spirit guides are saying, you know, just a, a few short years ago, the oligarchs had, you know, palaces, properties, yachts. They were, you know, squired around the country. They were super, super wealthy. They could go anywhere. Their family could go to school in any country they wanted. They could, they were literally kind of celebrated. You know, they were really big shots. Now, half of the countries they would be arrested in. A lot of them have been, you know, unceremoniously thrown out windows and drink, drink bad tea. You know, a lot of them are gone. The ones that are left are either terrified or, you know, 100% behind Putin. But they're all one thing, broke. They're all broke. Their yachts are gone. Their vacations are gone. Their kids' Ivy League education is gone. They're not happy. This, is, this wasn't their war. They never wanted this. This was Putin's megalomania. So, you know, and I've seen Putin... Last year, I saw a, a, an attack on him. I, I did see an, an attempt, I'll say an attempt, a poisoning. I, I, I described the whole thing right here on YouTube. Um, it didn't work because he has people that taste everything and, you know, but all it takes is one opening. All it takes is one person who can get bought off. All it takes is one little opening and boom, he's gone. So that's what I see. And then um, once he's gone, what I see is that a tightening of Russia, actually, even maybe potentially a police state, a martial law kind of situation, because the Russians are getting super fed up with all of their men. You know, how many hundred thousands of men are gone? Gone. 
How are they going to rebuild their population? You know, Ukraine doesn't let anybody fight until they're like a certain age, like 25 or 30, just to make sure that they don't decimate their population, right? Um, but in the meantime, Russia's just throwing their men in the meat grind grounder because they feel like they don't, they don't, because it's Putin. He doesn't care, right? So you have all these forces, you have all these mothers, all these wives, all these daughters, women. Have we not been talking about women, you guys? Don't discount women. Don't discount the women in Iran still. Don't discount women in the United States. Women everywhere will be leading the charge. And they will be doing that in Russia as well. So that's why you're going to have unrest. You're going to have this kind of lockdown situation. And then I think that um, that person will present themselves to the world as the new leader. And they will grudgingly is what I'm getting, grudgingly stop the war because the money's going out. You know, I, I saw a report that said now Russia has 7% of its GDP as weapons manufacturing. I don't really, the spirit guides say that that's not true. They, they, whereas they are manufacturing their own weapons, they, they, they can't get all the materials, right? It's, it's a war time situation. There's all these sanctions against them. Uh, to get materials on the black market is expensive. I just don't see, I just don't see their economy doing that well, to be honest with you. Um, and if it is doing well, it would be based on like such a negative level of ec economic, you know, um, you know what I mean? If you're down here and the average is here and you raise your up 7%, well, you're still nowhere. <laughs> you're still nowhere near the rest of the world. So, so then the end result is that this, this guy will rule Russia for a few years. And then I see Russia becoming more social democratic. I see it becoming more of a regular open country, the way it was starting to become under Putin when all the, when they had all of the um, Western, you know, stores there. But again, our lesson was he was who he was all along. He was still bombing and raiding other countries. And we turned a blind eye to that. And here we are paying the price. We're finally to the point where we're going to realize there is no other option. Perhaps, and I've said this before too, perhaps there's a little bit of a, a, a group of countries that get together that help Mr. P cross over, if you understand what I'm saying. At some point, regime change is your only option. Okay. So that's what I see. Um, you know, so what you can expect is a flare up in tension, a flare up in real, real war, like real, real war. Um, that's not going to make the world actors feel good. Um, but it has to happen. And I think that that's going to, the fact that that is, the fact that these, these oligarchs, the few that are left, see the writing on the wall, it's over, game over. Ukraine finally has what it's need, it needs, game over. Now it's time to take Mr. P out and, and do this regime change, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Thank you for your question, Darren. Sorry for your homelands uh, to be in such sad shape. Lawson, love to that area for peace and restoration. Okay. Cynthia wants to know if Alina Haba is going to be disbarred. Um, I just heard, yes, I could be wrong, but I think the energy suggests that she will be disbarred. You know, and I've told you guys, I always see these people, including judge Cannon, and this is for entertainment purposes only. I always see them having golden parachutes. I always see them going to work for some think tank, making plenty of money. It's all part of the deal. It's all part of, we'll take care of you if you do these things. It's a payoff situation, right? So, I but I do see her being disbarred. I mean, um, even if she's in a think tank, at least she's not doing anything in our ju justice system, which is really a big win for us, right? Um Kelly McCall says, what's the future of homelessness, especially with uh, DeSantis kicking people off of public property? Uh, you know, this is also true in Texas. 
um, tech, you wouldn't see tents in Texas. There's no way you would ever see that. They would haul them off um, in short order. Uh, so again, this is part of our lessons, right? This is a lesson that we're learning to treat humans as humans. What I see is, um, I'm going to look at the democratic states first because that's where you're going to see the action. So for the democratic states, once, once we get Biden is going to be elected, um, we're going to have a democratic Congress and we're hopefully going to have enough of a Congress, enough of a Senate and a, and a Congress to, um, and a house to, to really pass the rules, to, to really change the filibuster, to really get things done. Right. So next year, I see two things um, on Biden's. I mean, yeah, never mind. Two because oh, they're linked. That's why. Okay, uh, is mental health and homelessness because they're they're linked, right? A lot of times people are homeless because they have mental health issues. So he's going to be targeting that. And what I see is, you know, how he's found ways to for forgive uh, student loans. You know, he tried to do it through Congress, didn't work. So he's like, okay, let's figure out how we're going to do this some other way. Well, this is what I see him doing with homelessness. I see him giving democratic states big grants to uh, create these homeless, uh, these uh, new communities. Okay. They're, they're communities that have perhaps, well, they're, di they look different in different areas. Like I'm seeing one community that has like tiny 200 square foot little tiny buildings that would be scattered around a couple of acres. Um, and then I'm also seeing a building that is uh, multi-floors. Now, something that's interesting that they just showed me is, you know, a lot of our states are going to really be facing some big issues around the business buildings, the big buildings that all of these businesses used to occupy, you know, these 10 story, five story, 20, 30 story buildings that used to be rented out to corporations. They're empty or they're half empty. And this is a great way to repurpose them. Now I will tell you that it's not cheap and, and developers will tell you it's impossible. A developer is going to say it's impossible. Well, a developer is looking at this from a cost benefit standpoint. If you have the government coming in and saying, we're going to give you a grant to redevelop this and make this into apartments. And if you do that in 20 years, you can take it private. You know, right now you need to do it as a rent free or some kind of rent controlled or, or some kind of situation where, you know, you're not going to make a lot of money, but you're going to have the asset and we're not going to charge you taxes on it. Well, a lot of developers will sign up for that deal. You mean I get no taxes. I get to have an asset that I can after 10, 15, 20 years, I can turn it around and turn it into, because once it's developed into an apartment building, that's the most expensive part from there, adding all the plumbing and all of that and the wiring from there to renovate it into a hotel or to renovate it into apartments is not that expensive. The biggest expense is to add all the bathrooms, to add all the infrastructure you would need to add to make it into apartments. So this, I, I just see public private, like meaning government and private, uh, kind of connections to do this. And I think that you're even going to see this in some red states. I just saw Oklahoma being one of them, but definitely in the blue states, you're going to see this in the blue states. And that that's really going to be, I mean, let's talk about socialism. Why don't we, right? This is the government stepping in to help people who are homeless or experiencing homelessness and also help these business people who are about to lose their shirts on this big building. Once again, the government comes in with a smart idea. You know, the Democrats come in with a smart idea, make it all work for everybody. So yeah, that's what I see. And then at the same time, and then Biden, and we've talked about this before, but Biden's already announced um, programs for mental health, but boy, wait to 2025, 26, 27. He is going to be really 
there's a sense of somehow I don't understand why this is happening, but anyway, there's he's either creating a new type of therapist or a new type of licensing that specifically aimed towards young adults. There might be a new type of licensing or new funding for people who want to work with young adults. Um, I, I, I don't think he's very fond of the pharmaceutical company being the babysitter of our, you know, kids. I think he really wants to help these people. Um, these young people move out of whatever they're experiencing um, and have a life without being dependent on these drugs, right? Well, whatever it is, I don't know. But but he's going to pour money into research. He's going to pour money into licensing. He's going to pour money into uh, people getting student loans deferred or really, you know, re, you know, given back, credited. This this is Biden. This is what he wants to do. This is his. This is really really important to him. And you're going to see major major steps in this direction. And that also means that if we do this public private situation with these office buildings, and you're saying, well, in ten years they get them back. What do the people do then? This is what I'm saying. Biden is betting that his multi pronged kind of um, attack on this situation is going to solve it. We're not going to have the same number of homeless or people experiencing homelessness in 10 years as we do now, because he's going to treat the symptom, but then he's going to go to the root of the problem with all of this extra funding. And I, I have seen this for over a year and the energy has not budged. So that means it's pretty set in stone. It's just a matter of us getting through this next year, getting into 25 with our new Congress. And then, and then really the only thing then is making sure that our Congress has, you know, the wherewithal that has the real spine to do it, to say, Hey, we're getting rid of this filibuster, or we're going to change these things because we need to get some things done. And we're not going to be held up. Like you've held us up. We're going to literally march down the field and help our citizens. And I really think they 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 have it. I think especially by the end of this year, they're going to have the spine to do it. Okay, so let's move on here. The next question is from Victoria Cleary, and she's wanting to know about Bannon, Steve Bannon's appeal to overturn his conviction for contempt. It was heard on November 23rd by the D.C. Circuit Court. Uh, why is the decision taking so long? Will he ever serve four months for contempt conviction? If so, when? And thank you. Yeah. And meanwhile, Gordon, Gordon says, um, he's, he's doing what all of them are doing. He's spewing hate. He's uh, s trying to get us all to divide and hate each other. It's, it's terrible because again, you can't kick the can down the road. He's another one, just like Trump. He's here to teach us. You either put me in jail, gag me, really cause me to feel pain or else I'm going to continue to be your worst nightmare. This is our lesson, is it not? I mean, it looks like our lesson to me. So I feel like Bannon is running into more trouble. Um, right now, the energy suggests like right now, right now in April, that the whole judicial system, the whole judicial system is sort of like stunned. It's like they're stunned at what is happening, why these people are not abiding by the law. Why are these people thumbing their nose up at justices, at the justice, at the Supreme Court? They're stunned. It's like they're they're literally, they don't know how to act. They're they're nothing has prepared them for this. They're they're like, we don't know what to do. They're stunned. Um, so right now they're a little bit stunned. But as we get into June, it's like uh, the, their give a damn gets broke. I mean, really and truly, that's what I call it. My my give a damn got broke. And therefore, now I don't give a damn. And, you know, you're going to see the other side of me, right? So that's kind of what I feel like is happening with the judicial system. They're finally getting the memo. They didn't believe it, but now they believe it. And Trump is like teaching them. This is like a master class. In the little kid that gives the finger to the principal and the principal says, don't do that, honey. Put your hand in your pocket. 
or you're going to lose your snacks. You know what I mean? Well, this little kid needs to be kind of, you know, put in the, 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 literally the closet of the principal's office, you know, with some air holes drilled into the wall and food shoved under the door. You know, it's like, it, it's, it really is like that, right? Like, would you treat a, a small child like that? No, this is where we are. We don't treat our wealthy, powerful people like that. How could we? We could never treat them like that. Yeah, we can treat you know, black and brown people like that all day long, right? Yeah, we can shove them in solitary confinement. We can lock them up for nothing, but we can't do that to these people that have all this power. Well, here we are, right? Here we are. So yeah, I do see Bannon ran, running into real big trouble. Look, um, this contempt thing, it's a, it's a problem for him, but he's got more charges coming for him that, that I'm, for entertainment purposes only, but I'm hearing wiretapping. I don't know if he wiretapped or they wiretapped him, but you know, he has this penchant for doing business on these big super yachts in international waters. You know, like he thinks if he's in international waters, he's not breaking any law. You know what I mean? And he also feels like he's so far away. No one could wiretap tap him, but I don't think he's ever heard of a thing called NASA. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think, I think the NSA, you know, if you don't know that acronym, the, whatever that is, I don't know. The NSA is what they're saying. I think that, um, let's just say without me sharing too much that, um, that it has been known that the Russians used to train beluga whales to wear listening devices and swim under boats. Okay. It, we know this because every once in a while the the beluga gets gets lost and ends up you know somewhere where they shouldn't and you know we know this okay so Bannon knows this too but he doesn't care because what's he's just like Trump giving the finger to the principal come and get me he's they're all they're all daring they're all daring these judges to do something I dare you to do something well guess what honestly by June we're going to be doing something and it's going to leave a mark. Just stay tuned in June. Okay. Cause that it's, it's coming. The karma bus is coming. And by June and, and the funny thing about June is by June, I see Trump being wrapped up a lot, right? So he's either, this case is going to be wrapped up that he's in now. He's going to be in wherever he's at in one of his three special places. Uh, the best possible thing for him is, is home confinement in Mar-a-Lago, which could happen. It could happen. It's not as strong of a chance, but it could happen. But once, and, and the guides have said this, they're reminding me, they have said this consistently, consistently. Once Trump is wrapped up to some degree, you know, maybe he's in Rikers. I doubt it. I've told you why. I don't think he's going to go to a general population prison. And I think it makes sense. But whatever, wherever he's at, even if it is home um, confinement in Mar-a-Lago, once that happens, it's open season on MTG, Jordan, Gates, Bannon, Stone, all of them. That guy that I can never remember his name. It's either Paul, Rand, Rand, Paul. Why do we have two people with similar names from Kentucky? Um all these people, especially the people involved, even, even, you know, marginally with Jan 6, oh my God, their 4th of July is going to be spectacular. It's going to look like flashbang. You know what flashbangs are? When the FBI or the police show up at your house and they light up an explosion, just so you know, we just knocked on your door. That's their version of knocking on your door to say, hey, we're here. No, they just throw an explosive device through your window. So these people's 4th of July is going to look like the 4th of July. That's what Spirit Guys just told me. So just hang in there. It's coming. I know that he's thumbing his finger, his nose, everything at us. I know it. I see it. It's irritating as all get out. And it is a lesson. And it's only going to go so far because at some point, you're a judge and you want to keep your power. You To be a judge, you understand, and also judges don't make that much money, right? So you understand that you're, you have a, a power, okay? Being a judge is about power. It, it should be about power for the good. 
and netting out power in the right way, but it's all about being one of the levers of power in our society. Judges don't want to give up that power. And these people giving them the finger and acting like they have no power is causing them to have to step into their power in a new, more powerful way. Because no one is looking away. We're all looking at the judges going, when are you going to hold these people accountable? It's, it's basically like these, like Bannon and Trump and all these people are disrespecting the judges. Emasculating them, cuckolding them is what the spirit guides are saying. You think those judges are going to put up with that? Because they're not. They, every time they're sitting up there at that bench with that gavel, they have somebody's life in their hands. You know, their freedom in their hands. They're not going to put up with this. They're stunned right now. They're going to come to their senses. They're going to look around to see what bus hit them. And then they're going to be mad. And this is where we're going. So I'm not worried. I'm not really that worried about it. Um, well, I say that because I'm channeling 60% of my spirit guides. Now, if you were talking to Susan, it would be a stream of expletives and it would not even be able to be published on this <laughs> device right now. Um, so yeah, they're not worried about it. And I guess because I'm only 40% me, I'm not worried about it either. Um, but I, I agree it's coming. Look, justice is coming. I've said it. It's coming. We told you guys, if, if you're not a long time viewer, go back and look. Cause I predicted all of this was going to be happening court case right now. We are here. We predicted it a year ago. We're not always right, but we're right enough. We're right enough that it that I believe it when they say it. The only thing is free will. But the energy's building and it doesn't feel like it feels like the free will is going to be on the side of the judges and all of us as we say this is enough. We've had enough of these bad laws. We've had enough of these bad actors. We're ready for normalcy. We're ready for civility and you got to go. And we're seeing, and the next question is about MAGA. And we're seeing this already. Mary Jansen says, when will we see the disintegration of MAGA? It's already happening. People are talking about seeing less. I'm seeing less, way less. And I'm down here in red Texas and I'm seeing way, way less. Flags, stickers, all the above. There's one guy that still flies this Trump flag but I haven't seen a Trump sticker. I can't remember the last time I saw a Trump sticker, but there was a time six months ago when I was seeing them, every third car had a Trump sticker. I'm not saying they're all gone. I'm saying they're on the decline and they're on the decline for a couple of reasons, because what the spirit guides told you last year, land of milk and honey. They said this summer, the summer 2024, not only were we not going to have have a um, a recession. Remember when everybody was saying we're going to have a recession? Remember that? The guides never said we were going to have a recession. They said, we're not going to have a recession. They said, actually, we're going to have the land of milk and honey where everybody is going to be making some money. Some people are going to make more money. People are going to have um, be able to afford things. I know prices are high. Don't yell at me in the comments. Just because prices are high for you doesn't mean they're not high for everybody else. So they're not low for everybody else. That's your experience. Overall, the prices are high because Americans are buying stuff. They're buying everything that's not nailed down. Somehow they have the money to buy it. That's keeping prices artificially high. Also, because they have the money to buy it, the corporations are not going to reduce the prices. When you stop buying stuff, then the sales start happening. If People are buying stuff nonstop. Why would I put it on sale? Right? So that's what's happening. These MAGA, and, and this is exactly what they said. They said in 2024, they're going to be out on their boats, in their four wheelers, on vacation, at the drag races, you know, hunting, fishing, doing whatever it is that they like to do. They're going to be enjoying their life. That's what's happened. For them, it's more important to enjoy their life than it is to get all wound up and mad 
about 45 because their life is pretty damn good because of Biden, because all these new jobs coming in, their lives are good. Their lives are not miserable. Their lives were miserable under Trump, and he blamed the, the Democrats for that. But now their lives are good. They don't care. So you're going to see this sort of dissipate, okay? You said the word disintegration. I mean, that's another word, dissipate, disintegration. Now, what I see is, and I've, and I've always seen this too, is there's, there's a, a, you know, a group. There's a, a strong, small group of them that have gone too far, that, that, are, that are really in the cult, that have really been brainwashed. Um, now, I want to say this too. The spirit guides are reminding me how you're going to know if your relative, God forbid, spouse, God forbid, parent or kid, but whoever, boss, friend, whoever, when they start saying to you, they're all bad, the Democrats are bad, the Republicans are bad, I'm not voting because they're all crooked. That, my friends, is your indication that they have become disenchanted with Trump. So you don't need to you don't need to argue with them. You don't need to argue with them and say the Democrats aren't like the, the Republic. You don't need to, you know, like they say, don't interrupt your foe when they're getting ready to screw up. Let let your enemy screw up on their own. If they would only vote for Trump and instead they're going to stay home and protest, rock on. Sounds good to me. You know, I'm sorry you feel that way. I I hope you find a place, a, a better, you know, place of understanding of this situation, right? I hope you feel better about it, right? Um, if they come to you and they say, why do you like Biden? Then you can talk to them, right? But if they just come to you and say, it's all, they're all screwed. It's all terrible. There are no winners. Feel good because they've lowered their Trump flag. They've thrown it in the trash and they're moving on. Doesn't mean they're going to become Democrats. It just means they're not going to be supporting Trump. Number two, this true social thing, the spirit guides have told you guys is going to be the end of him. They said if he gets money to support it, the money that he got to support it will come back and hit him in the head. And it is. He has released more shares and now people are buying more shares. It caused the stock to go up some, but we know it's inflated. It's a pump and dump. He pumped up the value just so that they could get more money. They're going to sell it. The stock is going to crash. But Mr. MAGA is going to be the one holding his $1,000 of stock or his $25,000 of stock that's worth zero, that's junk. That's what the guides told me. That's the final straw. The final straw is when Trump takes their money. It's over. This has already been happening. Because remember when they made those Trump coins? Remember? And Trump told people, hang on to this. It's going to be worth a lot of money. And do you know that some of those people took those Trump, Trump coins to the bank and tried to cash them in like it was currency? Well, they found out that it wasn't currency and that they had been had. Again, it's the same lesson, is it not? Is it not the same lesson for the Trumpers as it is for the rest of the world? It's the same lesson. We're letting these people abuse us. We have to stand up to them. We have to go through the lesson and then say, never again. They're talking to me about Hitler. We went through the lesson and we said, never again. Germany said never again. You can't even, you know, it's illegal in Germany to do anything Hitler related, right? So we're going to get to this place where we say never again. And then the last thing I'll say, which is something they predicted years ago, which is I do see these centers, these um, deprogramming centers where uh, people are deprogrammed. They go and they get the mental help that they need for free because Biden will underwrite it for like a year. Again, part of his big mental health push in 2025, people will go, they'll get their help, they'll come back and they'll feel better. They'll feel better, right? And I think we're at 50 minutes. So I'm going to call this done.
I will do part two. There are so many questions about Leonard Leo. There's questions I'm going to be covering about um, Gavin Newsom, John Tester, the aftermath of the Biden victory. We have a lot to talk about, right? So this is part one. This will, pro I don't know when this is going to be published. I have to edit it. I have to upload it to YouTube. That takes sometimes hours. <laughs> so I wish I could tell you, all I can say is subscribe and you'll get a notification if you hit the bell when I have a new video. Take really, really good care of yourself, okay? Again, this is, it looks like nothing is being done, but what's being done is people are getting pushed to their last nerve. You know, I'm sure maybe as a parent, you were pushed to your last nerve, or maybe as a teacher, or maybe as a, as a boss, or maybe even um, as a child, you pushed your parent to their last nerve. Sometimes you just have to push people to their last nerve. This is what's happening. Trump is pushing us all to our last freaking nerve. And we're going to snap. And we're going to put him in jail. We're going to put him in timeout. And I mean, get Mo level time out. So just hang in there, guys. Really and truly, look where we are. A year ago, no one thought this would happen. No one would thought he would be before a criminal court. It took years to go through the judicial system for Watergate. It's not like this stuff happens like this because you want to know what? When you rush justice, no one gets justice. No one has a fair, a fair representation, right? We want to make sure that Trump cannot appeal this, that no one can say he didn't get a fair trial. That's why they're being extra careful with him. I think they've gone too far, but that's why they're being extra careful because they don't want this overruled on appeal. We cannot leave him any opening. He'll take it, okay? Trust me when I say everything is okay. We have Ukraine funding. Everything is moving in the right direction, okay? The only thing left to do is to take care of you. Take care of yourself. That's the most important thing to do right now. Okay, we'll talk to you really soon. For entertainment purposes only.